Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to be talking about the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction from Minion Games. This is for one to five players, ages eight plus, and it'll take you about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction is a spin-off to the immensely popular Manhattan Project game. In this game, this is a simple card game in which you are going to try and chain your multi-use cards together in order to get that delicious yellow cake uranium and, of course, build bombs because, well, this is the Manhattan Project. Before we start talking about the game, I want to give a big shout-out to Medieval Lords and go check out their games. Uh, Castle Dukes is an upcoming game, and they got Sweet Spot. They help send us to Gen Con, so be sure to send them some love. But let's check out the Manhattan Project. Project chain reaction. All right, then we're gonna take a little bit to get inside of the Manhattan Project chain reaction. So uh, first and foremost, we got a handy dandy rule booklet. It is one large page, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. This last part right here is actually just what all the different cards in the game do and how you play solo. So it's a very short, concise rule booklet that should have you up and running pretty quickly. It's also a pretty simple game once you know what you're doing. In Manhattan Project Chain Reaction, you are going to be building bombs using yellow cake, uranium, and various different workers in the, the hopes to be the first person to get to 10 points, which will trigger the end of the game. Once the end of the game is triggered, everyone will make sure that they've had the same amount of turns, and you will tally up to see who has the most points. So just triggering the end of the game does not mean you're going to win, but it can sometimes. So... How does it work? Well, we'll go over the components, and then we'll go into the gameplay. So first, we're going to start player card. You know what that looks like. We'll get that out of here. Uh, in this game, you are going to be using yellow cake and uranium to build various different things. Now, I want to mention that these are the two main kinds of currency in the game, in addition to workers. But these are also double-sided cards. I have them set out like this because I think it's a little bit easier. But they're cool little double-sided cards, which is nice. Uh, so you have those cards over here. You're also going to have four bomb cards in the center, and these are pretty self-explanatory. In order to build this bomb, you have to turn in one scientist, two engineers, three uranium, and bada boom, you put it in front of you, you got four points, which is nice. Uh, the, they, this one's worth seven points. Some of them are worth more, some of them are worth less. Up here, we have a bomb loaded card. This is two victory points at the end of the game, and it also can... Uh, act towards your 10 points to trigger the end of the game. This one, you just need two scientists and two engineers. But the catch with this is you can only load a bomb if it's worth five points or less. So you could not do, say, the seven or the six point bomb. I don't know why that is, but that's the way it is. Up here, you are going to have four different landmarks that you will be able to utilize. These landmarks are generally places you will not want to go. They will allow you to do an action to gain a uranium, a yellow cake, or a scientist, or uh, an engineer. And I'll take a look at this one. This, you just turn in any three people, and boop, out pops an engineer. Like I said, not very good most of the time, but sometimes that might be just what you need in order to build the bomb. The main star of the show, though, are going to be these five cards right here. These are the chain reaction cards. At the beginning of your turn, you are always going to have five of these cards in your hand. I'll show you how this works. We'll take a look at the card. Oh, we got a nice simple one here. So look at this one first. It's a mine. If you put any worker here, it can be a scientist, it can be an engineer, it can be a laborer, which is a nameless, faceless guy. You put any worker there and boom, out is going to pop one yellow cake. So you can use this card for that purpose. Or if you choose to flip it uh, horizontally, you can use this card for two scientists, which can trigger a different special ability. So let's say instead of doing that, maybe I could do this if I had three yellow cake and then I could use one of these scientists, the three yellow cake, and get two uranium. So I'll just run you through my turn. We'll see what we got. Ooh, we got the university. That's a really good card. We turn one guy into three guys. So that could be very helpful in the right situation. So let's see. Can we get cake... We can get cake. Okay, so I think I see it. I think I see it. This actually works out kind of... Oh, no, it doesn't work out kind of perfectly. Ah, crummy. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we really kind of want to get that three cake. We do not have... Two, we do have two engineers. So, yeah, we'll do this. We'll get two engineers. We'll put them just like that, and we will get three cake. What I like to do is I like to discard this to set it aside so I know that I don't have any more. But now I have a yellow cake in front of me. Now, I could end my turn right here, draw two cards, and be done. Or I can continue to go. Uh, you can use all the cards on your turn. You can use as many or as few of the cards as you want on your turn, but you always only get to draw up to five. So now we got three yellow cake in hand. That's pretty nice. We got this university card, which I really kind of want to hang on to because it's pretty useful. 
And I don't really see too many other uses for these cards right here. So I might actually just end my current turn right here with three yellow cake. So I would draw back up to two cards, hoping to get some good cards. Oh, wow, look at that one. So now, that would be the end of my turn. Everyone else would take their turn, and it would come back to me. So we'll do another mock turn. We'll see if we can get one bomb built. So this one right here, oh, I feel like we can string this together. Ah, oh, okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this one engineer right here. We are going to take that one engineer to the university. He's going to train three more engineers. Then we're going to take those three engineers, and bada boom, just like that, we now have five more yellow cakes. We have eight yellow cake. That is a lot of yellow cake. So now we need to work on converting that into uranium, which unfortunately we don't have any cards to do right now. Now what we could do if we really wanted to is we could go up here to the landmark and we could turn in one scientist and two yellow cake for one uranium or two scientists and one yellow cake for one uranium. But that doesn't really feel like the best idea right now. So what we'd probably just do, we'd probably just end our turn here and then we would draw back up to five cards. And yeah, now we're getting starting to get a card that might help us. This one's going to let us turn three of this uranium, uh, three of this into two uranium. And yeah, maybe we can even build a bomb this turn. Let's see if we can do it. We'll do one more mock turn so you can see how this works. So we have eight yellow cake in front of us, which is an insane amount of yellow cake. We need one scientist. So we will actually do this. We will turn in one scientist, three yellow cake. And just like that, now we have two uranium. And we still have one additional scientist that we can utilize. And we will, so let's see what we can do. Yep, we're going to build it. We're going to work really hard. We're going to turn in all four of these laborers, and we are going to use the university to get an additional scientist, which means we will have two scientists. We get rid of those cards. Two scientists, and we also have an engineer, and we also have uh, two uranium. So we turn all that in, and just like that, we have purchased ourselves a bomb. We have the first bomb card. New bomb card comes out for everybody to do. All these cards would go away unless I had enough stuff to do something else, which I don't think I did. Turn them into uranium, and we're not in a bad position here. We got five yellow cake. We got three-tenths of our way to uh, triggering the end of the game. But anywho, as you can see, you're going to rinse, wash, repeat, do this over and over again until someone gets to that magic number 10, at which point you will tally up the scores after everyone's had the same number of turns. Whoever has the most points we the winner of the Manhattan Project Energy Empire Chain Reaction. But before we get out of here, I do want to show you some of the other fancy cards that did not happen to come up. There's factories, which will let you draw additional cards or steal cards from other peoples. There's design bombs, which will let you uh, keep a bomb secret from everyone else that only you can build. Uh, there's an espionage in here. Let me see if I can get to the espionage. Look at an opponent's hand and take a card or steal one yellow cake from an opponent. Uh, and I do believe that is, oh, double agent, use a landmark without paying its personal, co personal cost. So that one's actually pretty good. Or steal one yellow cake from an opponent. But anywho, that's what you're going to get inside of the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction. Alrighty then, the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction from Minion Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. It is a light, simple card game with very little to explore. If you're hoping for more, for something a little bit deeper, this one's not going to be for you. What I mean by that is game to game to game to game, you're not gonna be doing anything terribly different. Like let's just say for Dominion, crazy example right out there, or even in the same size box, um, Star Realms. In Star Realms, there's different paths you can take. All right, I'm going to try this strategy this time, and then the next time I'm going to try this strategy. There's not really too many strategies you can explore in this game. It is a very one-dimensional game in that aspect, and it feels sort of samey, which is going to be a turn-off to some people. Also, player count, I like it best at two, three, and four if everybody knows what they're doing. Once you get to four and five players, though, the game can stretch out a little bit longer than you're going to want it to, and... Once you start getting to say, you know, like 45, 50 minutes sometimes, it's like, no, this game does not have enough meat on the bones to, to sustain that time length. So I did like it best at say two, three, four players. Also, solo gameplay wise, because I'm a solo gamer, I always like to mention that sort of thing. Solo game, I can't really recommend this as a solo game. It's one of those games where you're just trying to get as many points as you can and then just write it down and be like, oh, this time I got 23 points. Maybe next time I'll get 25. Hooray! Uh, also, the solo gameplay felt a little bit weird because 
the way the rules are, you can just uh, you can just play two cards, then draw back up to five, play two cards, draw back out to five. So really, pretty much every time, you can make the ideal move if you wanted to, which some people like. I really wasn't the biggest fan of. But I will say, learning the solo game is a great way to learn the game and then teach it to other people because next to nothing changes from the solo game to the regular game. So that is good. Any other cons I have with it? Oh, the theme's going to be a bugaboo for some people because you're building a bomb. But really, the theme and the mechanisms, I mean, eh, they're connected and it makes sense, but you don't feel like you're making bombs. Like, you don't feel evil or anything like that. Moving on to the pros, Manhattan Project Chain Reaction is a rock-solid little filler game that I can recommend. I enjoy this. It's compact, it's portable, it's easy to learn, it's easy to teach, uh, and it's a good deal of fun. I really like how the cards chain together. I mean, that's the main thing i don't know why thing was in quotes that's the main mechanism of the game and i do like that mechanism i think it's cool you get a hand of five cards you figure out the ideal way to puzzle them together to maybe get uranium or yellow cake and then you have to decide like mm, do i want to may have like an okay turn this turn and an okay turn next turn or do i want to have a mediocre turn this hand and a great turn next turn do you want to kind of build up to have a really good turn or you want to do a little bit each turn and hope it accumulates I like that aspect. I like the fact you get to see everybody's score so you can know how close the, the end of the game is coming and you're like, oh, should I go for a big one? Should I go for a little one? I also like the fact that there's four cards out there and you can't be guaranteed that the card that you're going to get is going to be there when it comes back to you. Now, granted, the cards aren't that terribly different at all. It's like, oh, this one needs an extra scientist. I mean, it's not going to wreck your strategy or anything like that. But still, uh, I like the concept of the landmarks out there because as I showed in the middle part, you never know when you might need that landmark and that's one the other thing with the solo game too like in the solo game the landmarks are almost completely useless but but i digress overall is a rock solid little light filler game if you're looking in the market for a light compact little filler game for two three or four players i can recommend the manhattan project chain reaction i enjoyed it and i think i'll be keeping it for the time being if you enjoyed this video please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know the theme of making bombs do you find that to be an interesting theme for me personally i do i like that theme i like the race aspect as well where you're trying to get the most bombs for i don't know nuclear warfare or something like that but does that theme turn you on or turn you off or are you indifferent to it? do you not really care let me know in the comments below and as always thanks for your time youtube